The 1990s, promising a perfect era for cars. The industry had emerged from the Great Recession, technological advancements had improved automobile handling and speed, and the number of exciting new cars had skyrocketed. Yet there were some cars that became a total disappointment. So, here are some of the worst cars the 90s. Cruising down the road in a Suzuki X90 might not exactly scream cool, whether you're a seasoned senior or a sprightly teen. This two-seater mini SUV was Suzuki's ambitious shot at blending the punch of a sports car with the cozy vibe of an SUV. Pop the hood and you'll find a 1.6-liter I4 16-valve engine, churning out a mere 95 horsepower. Off-road adventures? Not this one's forte. In fact, it struggled to stand out in any category, leading to a brief three-year stint on the production line. Picture yourself eyeing the Dodge Stratus, roomier than its Ford Contour, Mercury Mystique, or Nissan Altima counterparts. Tempting, right? But hold on to your excitement as this ride has its fair share of hiccups. The engines, be it the four-cylinder or V6, don't come without their woes. Brace for potential oil leaks that might lead to a pricey head gasket replacement. And here's a fiery detail. There have been cases of the power steering pressure line playing a risky game with the exhaust manifold, raising the specter of a potential fire outbreak. Now, ready for some recall history too. This 1998 model has seen the recall flag hoisted seven times, impacting over three million vehicles. The 1996 arrival of Cadillac's elegant sedan, the Katera. However, it vanished in just five years, leaving most people unaware of its existence. The age of disaster? Not exactly a champion in the category of premium vehicles. Its performance was unimpressive, its appearance was boring, and its interior was mediocre at best. Owners frequently had to struggle with coolant and oil leaks. And here's the real issue. A serious engine problem could arise from the timing belt idler or tensioner pulley giving out. The problem was so bad that Cadillac had to send back the 1997 to 2001 Cateras in an attempt to clean things up. The 4.0 liter V6 engine in the 1998 Ford Explorer? Not very strong. And how is the fuel economy? Very bad. The worst part is that this roller coaster has some rather strange features. Imagine the engine stalling, making strange noises, and refusing to start on hot days. That's not all, though. The interior. To put it simply, there are a variety of issues. Radios acting up, brake pedals coming loose, and doors not locking or unlocking as they should. There are an astounding 14 recalls on this 1998 Explorer. Given this long list of problems, it's understandable why this model has had difficulties. When you think about the 1997 Pontiac Sunfire, do you picture a swift vehicle? Even with the twin-cam engine, that isn't quite the case. The 2.4-liter .4 four-cylinder engine in this car? Prepare yourself for some harsh, idle misfires and rumbling, but there's still more. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, received an inundation of complaints regarding the Sunfire steering wheel. Set aside, 1.1 million Sunfires were recalled because of steering problems. The shocking part is that over 3 million cars have been affected by a total of 9 recalls involving this 1997 Sunfire. With this laundry list of troubles, it's no wonder this model's road has been rocky. Back in 1988, Oldsmobile led the Indy 500 with a stylish cutlass ragtop. Sounds great, right? Well, they made 50 for sale, but swiftly called them back, citing mysterious certification issues. Most were sent to the factory and scrapped, but a few managed to escape the crusher's fate. Fast forward to 1990, and the Cutlass returned, sporting an odd basket handle right in the middle. Wondering why? Structural support? Not really, because driving this floppy drop top wasn't a joy ride. Possible theory, a handy grip for junkyard workers. GM, however, claimed it anchored door latches and passive seat belts. No airbag, though, to keep costs down. Promises of an airbag evaporated, and after six years of sluggish sales, the whole cutlass convertible vanished from the scene. The Chrysler Concorde features a front grille that is reminiscent of elite manufacturers such as Jaguar, Aston Martin, and Ferrari. However, 
don't be fooled by its appearance, particularly with regard to the infamous 1999 model. This one is a cautionary tale with a long list of problems that include a paint job that isn't perfect, temperamental windows, engine problems, and gearbox problems. Even with regular oil changes, 1999 Concord owners face an oil sludge nightmare that can cause engine difficulties. Since 2000, the recall indicator has flashed five times in this troublesome year, affecting almost 3.3 million vehicles. In a quest to get young customers early, BMW's American Wing brought in the 3 Series Compact, aiming to snag budding buyers at a lower age. Sounds good, right? But here's the catch. To hit that $20,000 price mark, around $36,000 today, compromises were made. A small 1.8-liter engine replaced the power, and they swapped the slick E46's rear suspension for the older E30's trailing arms. Take it from us, driving this car is an eye-opener. The 318 Ti couldn't even keep pace with an everyday Dodge Neon. Yes, not the souped-up SRT4, but the regular Neon zipping a whole second quicker to 60 and costing half as much. Handling was all right, but the ride felt like mismatched puzzle pieces thanks to disjointed suspensions. And the looks? Picture a three sedan chopped by nine inches. Ouch! It took BMW four long years and a mere 25,000 sales to realize that a slow, unattractive, bumpy ride didn't exactly scream BMW excellence, no matter the cheap price tag. After America's Desert Storm triumph, the clamor for a civilian version of the military's high-mobility multi-purpose wheeled vehicle surged. Thus, the AM General Hummer H1 emerged, fulfilling the rock star dreams of many. But reality hit hard. Despite its Panama Canal-like width, the H1 offered passengers space akin to a matchbox, thanks to its engine bunking in with occupants. And that engine? GM's ghastly 6.2-liter diesel underpowered and overenthusiastic about noise. It engaged in a roaring battle with the H1's moaning driveline and screeching tires. AM General tried to hush the chaos with a Chevy 5.7-liter V8, making the already sluggish H1 even slower. When GM took over Hummer, they had an epiphany, turned them into civilian vehicles like the Suburban and Tahoe. Enter the H2, a hit that soared past expectations unlike the H1's rough ride down the sales lane. Ah, the 1990 Yugo Cabrio, a sequel to the infamous Yugo hatchback, making an already dreadful car even more of a nightmare for us capitalist folk. Get this, instead of a simple manual top for America's cheapest convertible at $8,990, Yugo installed a fancy electro-hydraulic system, a new thing to break in a car known for breaking down. While the hardtop Yugos upgraded to fuel injection in 1990, the Cabrio stuck with an old, stubborn carburetor causing headaches. Why the pain? Well, because in short, it wasn't about making life easy for American sun lovers. If proving the hardtop Yugo wasn't the worst car ever was the goal, they nailed it. But here's the kicker. Fewer than a hundred of these drop-top disasters found homes before the Yugo empire crashed in 1992.